Let us pray. Everlasting Father, King of Glory, speak dear Lord, for your children are waiting and listening to hear your mind from the teaching of your word. Lord, by this teaching, let lives be saved, and let the captives be delivered. Let the hopeless receive hope, let the ignorant be empowered and equipped with knowledge for immediate breakthroughs, and turn around. Let the poor be made financial giants, and let the weak gain strength and become strong again. And Father, may your name be glorified in all things, and may the Lord pour out an abundance of your blessings on every listener. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Keys to Health, Abundance, and Financial Fortunes Keys may be small in size, but without them, you may never be able to access bigger things or things that matter most to you. When you don't have the key to any door, gate, or whatever that's been locked up with a key, you remain under an endless struggle on how to gain access into the locked enclave. But when you have the keys to open the enclave, you gain access without struggling. The way to financial abundance is locked, and you have got to have the keys to get it opened. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, the Bible says, And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you power to get wealth, that He may establish His covenant which He swore to your fathers, as it is this day. Two things were made clear here. One is that as a believer, you believe that it is God who gives you power or the key to get or access wealth. Then too, God does this in fulfillment of His covenant with His children. So today, basically, we will be looking at the covenant and the keys, or the power to make wealth, as given by God. Another one is who qualifies for this power. And what are the qualifications? But before then, we have to first make it clear or certain that God's desire for us is a life of comfort and sufficiency. He doesn't want us to live in lack, poverty, or deprivation. As a matter of fact, with God, poverty, diseases, slavery, and servitude are forms of curses. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 28, from verses 45 through 47. Moreover all these curses shall come upon you and pursue and overtake you, until you are destroyed, because you did not obey the voice of the Lord your God, to keep His commandments and His statutes which He commanded you. And they shall be upon you for a sign and a wonder, and on your descendants forever. Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart, for the abundance of everything. And in Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, the Bible says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. How did Christ do it? He did it by taking upon himself our curse so that he might bequeath to us his blessings and blessedness. You can see this in 2 Corinthians, chapter 8, verse 9, where the Bible says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. And towards this confirmation, Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10, The thief does not come except to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. Evidently, one can see from these that one of the major purposes for which Christ came was to redeem us from poverty, lack, and diseases so that we may live in abundance. As we saw in Part B of Romans 10, verse 10, where it says, I have come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. Praise God! And by implication, every redeemed of Christ is qualified for financial abundance, 
other things being equal. Now then, the question is, what are the qualifications, and how can we translate the finished and accomplished work of Christ Jesus into our realities? Knowing and understanding that wealth and prosperity are God's will and desire for us, His creation. Well, the Bible answers that in many scriptures. The Bible clearly spelled out our roles in bringing His prosperity plans for us to bear or into fruition. He makes it clear that His prosperity plans for us are more of a covenant than a promise. A promise is without conditions, but a covenant has conditional attachments. For instance, in Job chapter 22, from verses 23 to 25, the Bible says, If you return to the Almighty, you will be built up, you will remove iniquity far from your tents. Then you will lay your gold in the dust, and the gold of Ophir among the stones of the brooks. Yes, the Almighty will be your gold and your precious silver. And conspicuously again in Job chapter 36, verse 11, it says, If they obey and serve Him, they shall spend their days in prosperity, and their years in pleasures. Here prosperity and enduring pleasure were tagged to obedience and service. And again, in Exodus chapter 23, from verses 25 to 27, it says, So you shall serve the Lord your God, and He will bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of you. No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land, I will fulfill the number of your days. I will send my fear before you, I will cause confusion among all the people to whom you come, and will make all your enemies turn their backs to you. We can go on and on, but all points to a singular fact, that God's prosperity plan for believers is a covenant. Now, apart from obedience and service as we have seen in the scriptures, what other qualifications qualify us for the covenant of wealth and abundance? Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 to 12, here the Bible says still, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field. And all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. Here the scripture outrightly listed tithes or tithing as a criterion for wealth, abundance and divine security for our resources. In Psalm 67, verses 3 to 6, the Bible says, Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. O, oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you shall judge the people righteously, and govern the nations on earth. Selah. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. Then the earth shall yield her increase, God, our own God, shall bless us. And elsewhere in the scriptures, joy and thanksgiving were listed as catalysts that facilitate our easy launch into the realms of wealth and abundance. In Isaiah chapter 12, verse 3, for instance, the Bible says, Therefore with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. This simply means that it takes joy for us to reap from the blessings and blessedness of our salvation, of which wealth and riches are among them. As can be seen in Revelation chapter 5, verses 11 and 12, which says, then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures, and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands. 
saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom, and strength and honor and glory and blessing. So from the scripture, Christ Jesus by his sacrificial death, has already obtained for us power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory and blessings. The only thing left is for us to apply it to our lives. God already knows all our needs and desires and has provided for them all, we only have a simple task for us to accomplish to take possession of all that. See Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 through 33. It says, Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or, What shall we drink, or, What shall we wear, for after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, King of glory, thanks for the gift of your word. Lord, cause your word we have heard to enter us, for according to your word in Psalms 119, verse 130, it is the entrance of your words gives light, it gives understanding to the simple. Lord, let your words that have been spoken and that we have heard give light to our spirit, leading to the manifestation of our redemption packages that include wealth, health, riches, and abundance of all the good things of life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for answering, for with thanksgiving we have prayed. In the name of Jesus Christ our Savior and Redeemer. Amen.